Finding a stranger to take care of your money can be a very scary experience. You might be thinking, well, what questions should I be asking them? What questions should they be asking me? What are the signals that tell me that this person is a competent and trustworthy person to help me handle my money? Well, the good news is I can point you to one book that has pretty much all the answers. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Hines. Welcome to Adulting with Money. And today I'm talking about how to find a financial advisor, someone that is competent and someone that you can trust. Now, this video is not going to try to convince you to uh, hire a financial advisor. If you already know that you want to hire someone, this is the video for you. And the book that I'm talking about is The Path by Peter Malouk and Tony Robbins. Now, if you're not a big fan of Tony Robbins, don't worry about it. It's more of a Peter book with some Tony Robbins chapters in it. And specifically, there are three chapters that I think you absolutely need to read. The whole book is good. The whole book, uh, if you read the whole thing, it goes over an amazing overview of just finances and wealth in general. So that way, if you read this book, and you go into a financial advisor's office to hire them or just to ask them questions, you will have good, important questions to ask. So the three chapters I believe that you definitely need to read are is chapter four, chapter eight, and chapter nine. So chapter four talks about those letters at the end of a financial advisor's name, like CFP and RIA and broker and all that type of stuff. And the book, I agree with this chapter for the most part. The book goes into that advisors can essentially be uh, re registered investment advisors, or they can be brokers, or they can be duly registered. And the book suggests that you really should try to find a registered investment advisor and avoid brokers. I agree with that because brokers are paid on commission. So they're incentivized to sell as much as they can. And registered investment advisors usually pretty much just work off of fees. And fees means that the more they grow your money, the more they make. And so they're incentivized to put you in front of them to do the best that they can for you first and foremost. Now, those that are duly registered, the book suggests to avoid them. And that's kind of where I disagree because I personally know advisors that are amazing. They are wonderful. They are kind. They are smart. They do the right things for their clients, uh, but they are duly registered. And some financial advising firms have that and some don't. If an advisor is duly registered, but they come with great recommendations from your friends and family and you go and talk to them and you like them and you can tell that they're putting you first above them, then they're still probably a good person to go with. And there's also a thing called a certified financial planner or a CFP. Those are, that's like the CPA of accountants. You have CFPs for financial advisors. Those are usually great people. They've done a lot of hard work and passed a very hard test to get that designation. So the next chapter I definitely think you should read is chapter eight, which is how the stock market works. And it doesn't go into ridiculous detail on how the stock market works. You're not gonna fall asleep reading this chapter, but it is gonna talk about how it goes up and how it goes down, how, how often it goes up and how often it goes down. And so that you understand how you know the stock market moves and things like market timing. Now, market timing is is like is people that are waiting for a moment to buy or sell and the book talks about how market timing if you do it perfectly it's amazing but i mean perfectly and it then goes into talking about dollar cost averaging and how just putting in little bits of money every month for the rest of your life you're going to do almost as good as market timing and the reason for that is <laughs> later in uh that chapter actually chapter nine then is that the book goes into how our emotions play with our financial decisions. We want to be economical, we want to make logical decisions, but the news, our emotions, stress, they all play on us. And, and there are terms that have been coined to teach you how you're tricking yourself. All right, so, so some of these terms are confirmation bias, overconfidence effect, anchoring, loss aversion. You definitely want to read this part about loss aversion because it turns out that losing or feeling pain is like three times worse than getting a gain. So if you go to a financial advisor and you've got a stock that's gone up 30%, you're going to be happy like, oh, cool. But then if you have a stock that's gone down 10%, you're going to go, okay, well, the, the gain was good, but let's talk about this one. Why did it go down 10%? How can we stop that in the future? And the loss, the, the, the way we want to avoid losing is so powerful 
it will play on your decisions. And so a great financial advisor knows that. They know about loss aversion. They know about mental accounting and all of these psychological tricks that we can trick ourselves, uh, but also the bad advisors are gonna trick you in using these tactics. So chapter nine is that third chapter where you really need to learn about the emotions and how they're gonna play with you. Okay, so how can you uh, use the path to find an amazing financial advisor? My suggestion is to get the book and read it. Read the whole thing. I mean, it's really, it's really not that long and get a clear understanding of everything that goes on in the financial world. And then when you go to talk to a financial advisor is take questions that you get or that come up in your mind from this book. And if that advisor talks like this book reads, you have found a competent and trustworthy person, I would say. And uh, this book is a great introduction. It's a great first step to just start to wrap your head around this whole idea of wealth and finance and then finding someone that can help you. If you're looking for another great book recommendation, check out this video where my wife reads Rich Dad Poor Dad for the first time and has some great lessons. Uh, YouTube thinks you're gonna love this video and thanks for watching. And don't forget, consistency beats perfection.